people that I love and trust, and I can sense this in myself, constantly give me feedback that I'm too hard on myself. And as I think more about what's causing it, I, I know that it's fear-based, and I'm wondering what role fear should have in my guidance system and when it's helpful and when it's overwhelming me. Well, first we want to say that all of your emotions are helpful because without them, you can't feel when you're in sync with who you really are and what you really want or not. Your emotions are your way that you can know what vibrational frequency you've got going on and how it relates to what you're asking for. You see, if you haven't lived life and evolved vibrationally, then there would be no gap for you to want to close. Another way of saying it is if your inner being weren't so sure of how wonderful you are, you would never feel negative emotion. When you're hard on yourself, the reason that it feels so bad is because your inner being is appreciating you so much, which might make you want to say, Hey, inner being, stop loving me so much because when I don't measure up to the love that you have for me, I feel awful. So my being hard on me is because you're so not hard on me or so good to me. That's a good way to look at that, isn't it? Yeah. So for example, for example, I'm in a transition period in my life and everyone is it, all the time, <laughs> every day. Very good. No exception. I feel like I'm trying to be open to, I'm looking for my hell. Yes. And I'm but trying we, to let it come to but me. We had this conversation earlier, a hell. Yes. Doesn't come. You know what he's talking about? Esther has a friend who wrote a book some years ago, why your life sucks and what to do about it. <laughs> Alan Cohen. And there's a segment in it that if it's not a hell, yes, it's a hell no. And what he was actually saying is what we're now saying about the receptive mode, rather than taking action to try to fix something that's broken, which is receiving inspiration from the receptive mode of vulnerability or overwhelmment or something else. Wait until you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on and really feeling good. And then when it feels like, yes, then you know that the inspired action or the inspired idea or the inspired behavior is going to be beneficial to you. Okay. And so that's why you want to be aware of the way you feel before you follow the impulse, because you're getting inspiration all day, every day. So, so I guess I'm just wondering is fear clouding signals that I may be having fear is not clouding anything. Fear is your indicator that you've made a cloud. Can you tell me more? Fear is your indicator that you're thinking about something very differently than your inner being is thinking about the same thing. So we talked about part of this earlier. You're not ever going to really feel the empowerment of something, the yes, unless there is momentum and you're not ever going to get momentum going. If you say, I want it, but I want it, but I want it, but. You've got to stop doing the countering thoughts in order to allow the momentum to proceed enough that you really feel the vibration of it. But you see, you're really going to like this. You all are. So let's say that there are five things that are pretty important to you in your life experience. And four of them are going quite well. And you take pleasure when you think about them. Let's say you're enjoying a particular relationship or you're enjoying a particular hobby or you're enjoying a particular interest in something or a particular person. They're just things that are working well for you. And then there are a few things that aren't going the way you really want them to. So as you focus upon those things, they are different subjects, but they all feel good. As you focus upon this, it feels good and this, it feels good and this, it feels good. You assume a vibrational posture that feels good, which means the subjects that haven't been feeling so good will have to begin to cooperate with the output that you are mostly outputting. It really is simple. Just find the things that feel good and focus on them or take a nap, find the things that feel good and focus on them or take a nap. Just don't give air time. Don't broadcast about things that don't feel good because when you broadcast about things that don't feel good, then your vibration gets all wrapped up in that. And what you're broadcasting becomes your point of attraction. And then your 
introducing contradictory energy to anything notice now pick some subject that is important to you some subject of interest doesn't matter what it is and give it to us my career so what is it I don't have one <laughs> so you just did exactly the opposite of what that whole long story was all about so didn't you yeah so that's something that isn't the way you want it okay. to be pick some subject that is the way you want it to be something that interests you something that you don't have any resistance or not much resistance about my, my wife all right <laughs> we'll deal with you later <laughs> what is it about your wife that is easy for you to find something nice to think about she instills confidence in me so I, I, she appreciates you yeah she appreciates so me. she holds you as her object of attention and flows positive energy all over you and as long as she's doing that you feel pretty good yeah all right <laughs> We're just playing with you because that's the conversation that we had earlier so what is it about her other than the way she is holding you up <laughs> that you are enjoying I feel ease when I'm with her all right so what else is she fun she's fun she, yeah we have similar interests is she clear-minded yes what kind of similar interests while well, she's here with me today <clears throat> anything else um, we, we love traveling together we enjoy going out and eating together all right so you feel kind of how that goes and even though you're together right now that's far from a hell yes right we know that one time it was a hell yes mm -hmm. and we're not saying that it cannot be and we're not even saying that there's any reason to worry about it in any way shape or form we're just saying right now the energy that you are presenting about it is sort of limp mm -hmm. and sort of objective so now let's take that subject which is an easy subject to do this with and let's turn it into a hell yes let's get some momentum going about it let's focus on it until you can feel momentum going about it so do you remember how you felt when you met vaguely it was a long time ago <laughs> I was young I, I was I was eighth grade do you remember having any interest whatsoever in this person yes 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 <laughs> did you say I have no idea why I'm even saying this but why don't we go somewhere is that how it happened yes <laughs> it was it was a, it was a long we were, we were friends before we were lovers all right so here we are we're fast forward all this way okay you have this relationship with this wonderful person and like almost everything in your life you're feeling pretty limp about it mm -hmm. And the reason that you're feeling pretty limp about it is not because you don't have keen interest and not because this isn't an important subject, but because you, like almost everybody else, to one degree or another, you've got this thing going where you think this and 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 you think this. Or you think about something you want and something you don't want and something you want and something you don't want. So you don't allow the energy to begin to move. So we're going to stand in your shoes and we're going to focus upon this person and we're going to focus upon my meaning you relationship with this person and we're going to do it with the singular intent of taking a subject that is rather resistance free in the scope of human events and therefore it's something that has really good odds of the energy increasing about it and we're going to focus in a way that you can actually feel the energy shift and the momentum ensue and the feeling of enthusiasm come so there are so many people on this planet and so many people that are interacting with one another and I have a lot of relationships with a lot of people but the person that is most significant in my life is what's her name Meredith the person who's most significant in my life is Meredith
Meredith matters to me for so many reasons, some of them indefinable. I have this sense that long before I even knew Meredith, that I was living life, I was having experiences with other people, and I was identifying for myself the things that were important to me. And Abraham is putting these words in my mouth, but I can feel that there were intentions that I garnered from the life experience that I lived that caused me to ask for the specifics that Meredith answers. And they were in my vortex. And if there is something that is meant to be, that must surely be what it is. Because my life caused me to ask for these things and the meant to be-ness of it brought me Meredith. Now, at first it didn't feel that important or significant to me because it honestly just felt like the next logical step. I I'd done such a good job sort of in my innocence of use that I would put things in my vortex without even knowing that I'd done it and the universe began doing what it does bringing together the cooperative components and there was standing before me this wonderful 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 being who was in many ways just the next logical step and in other ways the answer to everything that I had been asking for not just what I was asking for that far but I came into this life experience intending to have such a partnership. And so there was momentum in my vortex even before I got here, even before I started having the experience that caused me to put Meredith in my vortex. So long before I even got into this physical body, I now believe that the components that Meredith is were in my vortex. And so this next logical step just happened to me. As the next logical step happened, I began to realize that there is so much more for me to discover because while it was the next logical step, because of the life that we began to live together, we began putting more and more and more into the vortex. And this Meredith is the most cooperative component. It is the meant to be-ness of all meant to be-ness because she puts up with my placidness. She puts up with my limpness. She puts up with my beingness. She is a sort of unconditional lover in the sense that she must feel the meant to be of this also is it possible that the two of us have come into this life experience with so many things that we've intended and that we are satisfying those things in one another so powerfully and so step by step that we continue to find harmony harmony that the friction isn't such that it makes me ask for big things but the harmony and compatibility is such that it just keeps being the next logical step and the next logical step I can't think of anyone with whom I could be moving and growing and becoming and evolving that we could be step by step pace by pace assisting one another in the way that we are I am so exhilarated about being in this time space reality discovering who I am with a partner like Meredith at my side now that's momentum you see don't you feel that don't you feel that and don't you know it I do wasn't everything that we said exactly what you know yes so the thing that you're being hard on yourself about is about being so often in alignment but you're mad at yourself for not asking for more than just the next logical step maybe you are someone who's not letting your life get so out of alignment that you're asking for big things maybe your rockets of desires aren't coming from great lack or need maybe you are in tune enough that the next logical step is serving you extremely well would say so don't compare yourself to what others are doing would you say that you are most often happy or sad happy would you say that you're most often centered or frazzled centered would you say that you are most often pleasant or unpleasant I think pleasant <laughs> would you say that you are more often optimistic or pessimistic pessimistic about what I think in general my initial inkling is often upstream thoughts but how does that square with the first questions that we ask you we think that there's something from some strong influence in your experience that's caused you to doubt yourself mm -hmm. and we just want to point out to you how illogical that is when things are working out so well for you and we think it's a misunderstanding of how the laws of the universe work we think it's a misunderstanding that a lot of you picked up along your physical trail that says you should be paying a price and you don't feel like you are you should be suffering and struggling and you don't think you are and so because you're not paying the price of misery and unhappiness you don't expect the results that others have promised will come from misery and unhappiness 